going to turn on the recorder. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case, you know. I didn't realize I was supposed to look nice today. Yeah. You gave me the memo. Yeah. I mean, Ryan, oh, no. you're telling us dad jokes. Yeah. We don't smile when he's talking jokes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can't tell ja dad jokes on command. Oh, there. Uh, <laughs> no, they just come one. out. Okay, I got one. <laughs> No, I can't say this. I have. <laughs> no, I get to see what I'm missing anyway. So. <laughs> okay. Is that it? <laughs> Come, on, Come on, Rodney. Jokes. I don't, I don't I can't do it in one command. No, very, it's very organic. Dad yeah. jokes are organic. Okay, you they just be come in. Help us smile now. <laughs> <laughs> We're just happy here at Flannery and Zoning. Yeah. We're just missing the angry mob. We're going to take away your next birthday. How's that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Is that your pose, Ron? <laughs> That's his pose. <laughs> <laughs> He's looking right at you. Yeah, do some pointing. <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> Photoshop him in later. <laughs> We've got two CUPs tonight. And do we have, yeah. how many final plots do we have tonight? Three? Three on the consent agenda. Three on consent. That should go pretty quick. Well, let me grab that. Okay, then let's call the meeting to order. Okay. Good idea. And now we're ready for report on council action. Okay, so commission, we had uh, one final plat was approved. That was for Sweetwater Glen, number four subdivision. Um, and then Parker Estate subdivision. Um, you may remember that one was the ne one next to, uh, on Greenhurst Road near uh, Albertsons, kind of that area over there. Um, and that one requested a reconsideration and the reason it was approved, but the reason that they um, requested the reconsideration was because they, uh, city council put a condition on them that they had to have a certain percentage capped uh, for, for rentals in the, in the development. And the applicant is claiming that that's not a legal um, requirement. And so our attorney recommended that the uh, city council approve the reconsideration and they did. So um, the applicant came in today and is going to be, um, has turned in the fee to have that reconsidered. So that'll go back to city council for, um, for a public hearing again. Um, the next one is a variance. Um, this was for the Tom Scott Motors dealership. And um, essentially it was, there was um, some, mature trees along a local road. And in order for that property to be developed, to, to be paved, currently it's just gravel. It's a gravel parking lot. And um, any improvements to that property by code requires that they um, put in a landscape buffer along the front and that the, in, um, we couldn't have evergreens out in the right of way. <clears throat> and that's for several reasons. Um, cleanliness of those trees, you know, they're putting down needles all the time, but also because um, it, they can get diseases and they're just more maintenance um, out in the right of way. And so um, they requested a variance to the landscape buffer and to the requirement that they only have, um, that they 
can't have the conifer or the the evergreen trees in the right of way, and both were approved. So the variance was approved, um, and but it was um, required that it sunset as soon as any kind of development occurs on the property, a building or something, or if the land use changes or if the owner changes for the property. Um, the concern was a, a variance actually goes with the property for eternity. And so um, they had to put that condition on there because if somebody wanted to come in right now, if the, they didn't put that condition on there um, and build a new uh, commercial building, they wouldn't have to do the regular improvements that we would require um, the landscape buffer out in front. And so um, that that is sunset. Uh, it's set to sunset. So I think that, that will work. Um, the next one is... An annexation and zoning to RS6 uh, off of Sunny Ridge Road. Um, and this is just for city sewer utilities. You saw this one, um, yeah, pretty simple. Uh, the next one is annexation and zoning to uh, IL. And this was the one that's uh, up north with that really large industrial um, properties that we annexed in all at once. It's just a single family home that didn't get annexed and they're trying to use that property as part of their industrial development. So pretty simple, that one got approved too. And then um, the code amendments that we talked about, um, we, we passed on your concerns um, to the mayor and, um, and we heard from several developers about concerns about not being uh, directly involved in the development of that code for industrial design review. And so the mayor has asked us to, um, she directed us to continue that project uh, to November 7th. So the code changes will go before city council on November 7th. And uh, we have it set to have a meeting on October 18th to, here in this room um, to go over those code changes and, um, and just kind of review them with any of the development community that would like to have input on it. Um, we also sent it out to as, as many as we could think of uh, our list of developers, um, the industrial design review code changes. So we're hoping to get some feedback there. Um, however, the, the meeting on the 18th really isn't designed to rewrite the code. If we do that, we're going to have to start all over. And so the mayor directed us to just basically ask questions, hear their concerns, and pass that along to the council um, on the 7th of, of November. Um, the last one was a variance <clears throat> requiring a minimum 20 foot setback from primary front property line for a garage. Um, and this one was, I don't know if you remember this one, but it was uh, Susan Schindler right off of Smith Avenue um, Smith Avenue Hideaway, we saw this subdivision come a couple of years ago, I think. And that's just three properties, one of them being a duplex that you recently approved, again, because it expired. So after you approved the duplex, they realized that their, um, where they placed the, pro the building uh, on the lot was too close to the property line. And so um, they requested a variance, and that was granted that is all I have. Do you have any questions for me? Okay. Any other staff communication? Um, just um, the November, or excuse me, the October 18th workshop that's coming up. Again, it's not, you're, you're not required to attend, um, but it is, um, we're just going to have our attorney go over the city council, or excuse me, public hearing process. Um, we're also going to outline um, the development process so that city council and um, the mayor can clearly see all the steps that are taken to review a project before it gets to them. Um, we're finding that they're, cons they're often expressing concerns about, um, well, is this going to get reviewed by city staff? Is this going to get reviewed by city staff? You know, multiple details uh, for each project. And we're just trying to communicate that each project that comes before them has a lot of review um, during the entitlement process, 
but also through the building permit process. And so we want to just kind of paint that picture for them. This is going to get reviewed. Really, the main thing you can do as city council um, is to uh, adjust the code so that they know what's expected of them. And um, that's easier on developers. It's easier on us. It's, it's the right thing to do because it's clearly spelled out in code um, rather than guessing you know, what's going to be expected of them at a public hearing. What time is that meeting on the 18th? That's going to be at 7 o'clock. Um, we are the second item on the agenda, though. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Sorry about that. So two meetings. Yeah, so the 18th is the one for industrial developers. Thank you for that. And um, the one on the 20th, I think that's a Thursday morning. That's the... Thursday morning at 7 o'clock, the 20th, um, is the city council workshop. And we are the second item on the agenda, so it could be 7.30 or so. Before. And on the 18th, that one starts at 7 as well? No, the 18th one starts at 10 o'clock and goes till noon. So that's the industrial design review uh, for developers, industrial developers. That's here at 10 a.m., or excuse me, that's at the Development Services um, offices. There's a lot going on here. <laughs> yeah. Is it going to be a, there going to be a Teams meeting on that one? Um, we, we certainly can, if you want to participate that way. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Consent agenda. Madam Chair, I move that we approve the consent agenda. Second. I moved and seconded to approve the consent agenda. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, that is approved. Okay, public hearing item number one. <coughs> Initial use permit for utility-owned structure use in the GB1 business zoning district. Do we have the applicant here? Come on up. <coughs> Tell us what you want to do. Thank you. Thanks for taking time this evening. Uh, Andy Cockle with Maverick Towers. I need to state my address. Yes. 1815 North 11th Street in Boise. Uh, Maverick Towers is a wireless telecommunications development company, and we work with the three major carriers, now a fourth carrier, DISH, to basically expand their network, mostly towers, um, some small cell development for capacity issues. But what we're proposing is a 120-foot wireless telecommunication facility at 6246 East Hunt Avenue. And we have AT&T signed up to be the anchor tenant. And we design our towers to accommodate up to four carriers. So hopefully uh, that would reduce the number of required towers in a specific area. Um, the property is zoned GB1 Gateway Business, and on the future land use maps, it's uh, designated industrial. So we feel this location is a good location for the underlying zoning as well as the impact on the surrounding area. Um, you have a buffer between uh, apartments to the north with the railroad. Um, there's industrial use to the east, uh, more business to the south, and then uh, a big hill in the golf course to the west. So we think the tower will blend in nicely in this area. Um, I can get into any of the details of any of the information in the application package if that's um, anyone has any questions on them, but um, I can just open it up to questions and find out if there are any. Would that be any plans to camouflage that? Or is, do you guys really do that? No, Make not, not like in a, this area, just because the underlying zoning uh, is future designation industrial. Um, I think uh, there's not a lot of trees. So it look out of place, I guess, if you did, huh? I, I think it would draw more attention to it than, than a regular tower. There are some uh, transmission power lines that run right through there, so I think it would probably be a better, a better choice just to have a regular monopole. Whenever, 
That's all I had. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Madam Chair and Commissioners, uh, for the record, Rodney Ashby, Planning and Zoning Director. Um, the request is before you on the screen. It's in your packet, uh, CUP for uh, utility owned structure or use that is required in, in our code and a 120 foot wireless telecommunications facility as has been described. Um, comprehensive plan, he already pointed that out, industrial um, GB1 zoning. Um, he's described the land uses in the area. That's also on your screen. The history for this is that it was annexed and zoned to GB1 in May of 2007. Um, in June 2008, the Empire Business Park number three subdivision occurred. And May 2010, uh, there was a CUP for outside RV storage. In April of 2014, a CUP for indoor self storage, uh, which is kind of the primary use on the property now. And then uh, June of 2014, a variance was requested and, and uh, granted for setbacks, variance from setback requirements. Um, they have all, ut there's the zoning, sorry, I should have gone through that. Um, here's the utilities, it's already, um, it's already got utilities to the property, available to the property. Um, there's the layout of where it would fall on the property. Um, if you look back on this map here, you can see that that's that uh, corridor that, um, <clears throat> the rail corridor that it's going to be right up against. Um, but also to the east is the industrial project or property. Um, here's the uh, schematics of the tower. You can see it there. Going to be fenced, has access. Your typical applicable regulations apply here for CUPs. It needs to be compatible and <clears throat> um, in harmony with the, the area. <clears throat> and excuse me. <clears throat> um, let's see. Correspondence we've only received from two agencies, building department, their standard comments about Title IV. Engineering said any future development of the site is subject to the building permit plan review process and um, that will rev be reviewed at that time for, for their requirements. And they highlighted the Hunt Avenue is providing the access. Comprehensive plan uh, didn't really refer to this kind of land use. I, I couldn't find anything except for um, where it, was in the air near the airport, and they just said, "Hey, be careful about the height near the airport." Um, this isn't near that, so I think we're okay there. Um, the surrounding land uses are industrial primarily. Um, the there is residential 200 feet to the north, but um, but it is separated with between. It's separated by a the rail uh, the rail line, so seemed like that created a buffer already. Um, and then to the west is the golf course. Um, but this property or this uh, use is going to be on the east northeast corner of the property. And so even their own property creates a buffer from this uh, tower to the golf course. <clears throat> um, public interest. We haven't received any public comments. Um, generally, cellular service is a needed public utility that will enhance the livability of the area, which is one of your criteria for a conditional use permit. Um, the use has a proposed access from East Hunt Avenue. Um, uh, really not a lot here. Staff recommended findings are listed on the screen. Um, and. I wanted to just quickly highlight this. We're trying to change our the way we do our staff reports so that um, our, our attorney expressed some concerns about us interpreting your motions and the, your discussion for the findings of fact. So Local Land Use Planning Act for the state of Idaho requires that, um, that written findings of fact be approved by this commission. 
So um, what we've done is we've recommended find, written findings of fact. And then if you choose to approve the project, then we'd recommend that you also approve the staff recommended findings. So then there's no concern about us interpreting what, um, what the findings of fact were. This is what they are right here and you approve them. So we're gonna try to do that the best we can. Uh, hopefully that helps um, um, alleviate the concerns from our attorney. So I'll show you how that'll be done. Right here, I just put at the end of the motion with all recommended conditions and findings. So, and this, these are the two motions for your consideration. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Rodney? We'll open public hearing. Madam Chair, I move that we close the public hearing. Second. It's been moved and seconded to close public hearing. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It's been, public hearing is closed. Okay. Madam Chair, I'll make a motion that we approve the conditional use permit, or <clears throat> excuse me, a utility owned structure use, a 120 foot high wireless telecommunications facility at 6246 East Hunt Avenue in a GB1 zoning district for Maverick Towers, LLC. Andy Cockrell representing store itself, storage LLC with all recommended conditions and findings of staff. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. This CUP will be effective 15 calendar days from the date of this hearing unless an appeal has been filed with the planning and zoning department with the appropriate fee. No action should be taken on the CUP until the appeal period has concluded. The applicant must confirm with planning and zoning staff there have been no appeals. Good. All right. And for number two, we have an applicant online. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. You're on. Oh, uh, um, my name is Carlos Corvera. I live at 369 First Street North, Nampa, Idaho, 83687. And uh, I was getting a permit because uh, I want to build a home uh, in that lot that I'm in. But the thing is that there's a trailer there and uh, I can't build. I can't build a house while there, the trailer is there. And so I was asking for a chance to, once I build a house, I can remove that trailer and uh, make it nice, make the, the lot nice. Uh, with some landscaping and stuff like that. Okay. All right, well, we'll hear from city staff, city staff and hear what they have to say, and then we may have questions for you. Okay. All right, Parker. Well, thank you, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Um, the action requested from you tonight is the approval or denial of a conditional use permit for a uh, temporary use of a pre-move-on house as outlined in uh, Title 10, Chapter 1, um, Section 12. Um, the zoning in this area is ILRS. It's a, a mixed zoning. The land uses to the north are single-family homes zoned RML. To the south is the railroad. To the east are more single-family homes of a similar zoning, as well as to the west. Um, and the, all the utilities are existing in First Street North. Um, the conclusions of law for conditional use permit um, needs to be uh, the size, location, design needs to be compatible with the uh, abutting properties and uh, development. Um, staff finds that the conclusion can be uh, met with uh, the recommended conditions that we'll cover. Um, the location design site planning of the project uh, will need to provide convenient functional living um, as the setting warrants. Again, staff finds the conclusion can be met with the recommended conditions. Um, and then the last uh, conclusion there, the project will enhance the successful operation of the surrounding area. Um, again, staff finds the conclusion can be met with the conditions. Um, 
the regulations here, the um, we're we're category categorizing this in our uh, use chart as an un, uh, ambiguous um, use that's not listed in the chart. Thus, would require a CUP. Um, we have a section on uh, pre move on houses in our our temporary use section of uh, chapter one, title ten. Um, it states temporary residence use as a pre move on house shall be allowed on legal building lots in zones where single family homes are, are permitted, um, which this lot is. And then temporary residence use as a pre move on house shall be allowed for a maximum of 365 days uh, from the date of approval and then extension may be sought. Um, here is the building permit that's currently uh, in review for the new structure. Uh, this image is a little dark, um, but you can see the existing home at the front there. And then behind it is where the new home will be constructed. The correspondence, uh, the development needs to be, will be subject to Title IV, and they're currently under review uh, with the building department for the building uh, permit. Um, and then the engineering uh, division just has comments that uh, would be applicable under the, the building permit as well. The staff analysis is medium density area uh, surrounded by primarily single family homes. Um, there's, it's a mix of stick built and manufactured homes here. Um, it's in the public interest as it states in the comprehensive plan to provide housing opportunities in the city. Um, then the last note, conditional use permit to allow a move on house would uh, allow the property owner to construct a more appropriate structure and in a, in a more appropriate location on the lot uh, while still being able to live on the property until it's uh, constructed. Uh, the potential conditions of approval are here. Uh, a couple to note, um, the applicant will need to get a, a temporary use permit um, that's really for our tracking purposes so that we can start the 365-day the clock. Um, and then the last condition there is uh, upon completion and occupancy of the new structure, the uh, move-on house um, that's currently there will need to be vacated and removed from the property within uh, 60 days. Um, so those are... Um, the conditions kind of behind the intent of the, the move on house. Um, the recommended findings, um, Rodney went over um, the, these, uh, the importance of these as well. Um, these are in the staff report as well. And then the potential motion is here and I will stand for any question. Uh, Parker, on that one on item number four, the occupancy one. Yeah. Would it be better to have that the 60-day clock start at the issuance of a CFO? That, um, that's, yeah, that's how. That when they actually occupy it? Correct. Because then yep. they could take their time. Mm -hmm. I, I just think, you know, if they get it completed, get their CFO, that's when the 60-day clock should start. Yeah, um, I can clarify that language in the conditions. Um, um, if we put that in the motion, then I can clarify that it's upon uh, issuance of the occupancy that the 60 days will start. You question your motion? Yeah. Can I have public hearing first? Yeah. I'm just giving yeah. them a heads up. Yeah, get ready. <laughs> okay, we're going to open the public hearing. Are you here to testify, sir? Yeah. Um, I was yesterday. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Make a motion that we close the public hearing. Second. It's been moved and seconded to close public hearing. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, public hearing is closed. I think it's good. I like it. Yeah. <clears throat> I, this is the first time I've seen one of these, though. Does this happen quite often? These TUPs? I mean, I haven't seen this. Very rare. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'm just sitting here. Okay. Just rereading everything. Yeah. I, I might have a question. Hold on. 
I move to approve uh, to approve a conditional use permit as required under NCC 1032B to issue a temporary use permit for a pre move on home as outlined in NCC 10 1 12A.11.8. <laughs> point A at 369 First Street North in an ILRS um, zoning district on 0.35 acre parcel for Carlos Corvina Corvera with all staff recommendations yeah. and findings and conditions with the change of item number four being at the issuance of the CO, CFO. Second that. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. This CUP will become effective 15 calendar days from the date of this hearing unless an appeal has been filed with the Planning and Zoning Department with the appropriate fee. No action should be taken on this CUP until the appeal period has concluded. The applicant must confirm with the Planning and Zoning staff there have been no appeals. And then that's it. We are adjourned. <laughs> I said 625. <laughs>